All right, YouTube, it's time for the occult video 106. Reality is completely malleable. This is a companion to my release, and I'll be speaking of this after this video is done, of occult memetics, which, as I said before, has an image on Amazon that doesn't, trust me, represent the actual cover format. It's uh, the first file I uploaded was badly off-center. The new one's just fine. It's perfect, uh, but it hasn't updated the image on Amazon yet, so it looks terrible. It looks, abs it looks like a piece of crap. We're going to conduct a little bit of an experiment right now, and that will allow you to uh, see part of what I'm trying to illustrate there. What is this? You probably said coin or nickel. It's, it's a nickel, but you're actually still wrong. It's not a nickel. It's two nickels. Your observation did not allow you to see that there was a second nickel behind the first one. Uh, because your observation of that reality, the discrete thing you're trying to gauge, is limited. Thus, you are wrong. Uh, you can conduct a simple experiment of the same general sense. Take an apple, cut it in half, and position it against a black background or something such that it looks like an apple that just or just hold it in your hand with the empty part of course by your hand what's this people say well it's an apple but it's not an apple it's half an apple it's a totally different thing it just happens to come from the apple but let's envision a reality in which this is one two nickel and this is just a half of a two nickel your reality would be completely different. The way in which you would gauge the object you're looking at would not be the same. We label things and classify things upon a completely objective, uh, subjective rather, framework. Early man, for instance, didn't have words for most of the concepts and things that we have words for. For instance, let's say you're eating an apple as opposed to eating a pear. But now imagine a culture <clears throat> in which the apple and the pear are both just fruit. They have no term to differentiate between the two. Now imagine a culture in which a piece of roast beef is essentially the same thing as a pear because they only have a word for food. Now assume you have a pre-literate culture that doesn't have a term for any of these things. They simply react to their surroundings and they happen to be consuming these things without even having a word for consume, a word for food, a word for, oh, look out, that's poisonous or there's a spider on your apple or something like that. These different groups of people are see reality in a totally different light from one another. For, this is recognized within linguistic anthropology. This is recognized even within mainstream science. Uh, there are cultures still extant to this day in the world that don't have words for many of the things that the, the English-speaking westernized sort of core of the world has words for. There are tribes in this world who don't have a red, they don't have a blue or a yellow, they have wet and dry, or something to that effect, to determine whether something is shiny or not. There are people that don't have a word for the color blue. They, they do see it. Physically, they're seeing the same thing that we're seeing. Like, the light on my webcam is blue. The Trump pen sign has a blue background. But if they were to look at it, they wouldn't be able to delineate what that thing was, why it was different from anything else. In the most original state, this posits a mankind, a proto-modern human culture, that can't even communicate the fact that it's different from the rest of the world around it. When man looked at the stars, he just assumed that they were some other distant living thing. They were up there twinkling, they seemed to move over time. Well, they must be alive, they have motion, they're dynamic. The water had a spirit, the volcano had a spirit. The, tree, the wind was a spirit rustling through the trees, and they couldn't even necessarily, they didn't even have words for half of these things, if any of them at all. Their conception of reality was just as objective as ours. When we look back at 200 years in the past, we see people, they accepted slavery, they saw no real problem with it. The concept, that, the stuff that we would call bigotry, they said, oh, well, it's, we just take it for granted. Yeah, the races are different. Some people are more advanced than others. Some people are totally savages. Some are barbarians. Others are semi-civilized. Like maybe the, they, they labeled the Mesoamericans specifically semi-civilized <clears throat> as part of their noble savage stuff. And then you've got sort of the great nations versus the, the lesser states that are they're just as civilized, but there's just something wrong with them or something like that. We look back, generally speaking, we say, well, that's sort of an outmoded line of reasoning. They considered it, though, to be objective. 
200 years from now, people will look back at the sort of things that people in this era are saying, and much of it will be completely outmoded. What we take as objective, observable, absolute truth will no longer be considered so. There you have it. In the progression of mankind, absolutely everything is subjective. The only objectivity that can exist is a human description within an agreed-upon human framework. For instance, the reason why this is a nickel, or this is a microphone, or this is my jacket, this is my hair, is because people agree upon the term to use to communicate what they're looking at, what they're experiencing. You can even put a hallucination in a person's mind. In essence, if I start to, if I start telling a story and describing something that you've never yourself actually seen, you'll begin to visualize it, generally speaking, if you have a visual mind at all. Some people, a minority of people, can't really visualize anything in their head. I can, most people can, some people have photographic memories, they're sort of at the opposite end of that spectrum, I suppose. I'm well aware of the fact, and slightly upset about on a general basis, the fact that there's no language in which I can describe some of the things that I think about to my audience here, uh, because there are no words for it. People, it would take a huge amount of roundabout effort to develop sort of new terminology to speak about uh, actual truth, because the world you see around you is nothing more than an illusion. The difference between a lunatic and a visionary or, or great mind of your time is that the lunatic's hallucination, their skewed or different conception of reality, is not something that they're able to communicate as effectively as the visionary. The visionary, the great leader, the great inventor or something, has created a new idea and gets culture to agree upon that idea with them. Uh, and sometimes uh, they die before this happens. Of course, you think of evolution. Evolution is generally accepted within most of the Western world by the majority of the population is true. Some zealots hold out, some parts of the third world still deny it for the most part, but generally speaking, people understand that the basic concept of natural selection does operate. But in his time, it was bitterly disagreed upon in Darwin's age. Uh, it was not uh, assumed to be true in a democratic fashion. The, f the funny thing is, if I do the apple trick, if I say, is, what is this? And a whole crowd of people is beholding. If they were to form a committee to agree upon what they were witnessing, they'd say it was an apple. But then when I reveal that it's not, that it's half an apple, their flawed conception of reality is something they will bitterly defend. They will bitterly defend it. They'll actually start, so, oh, well, well, yeah, but it's just half taken from an apple. It's, it's, uh, you're splitting hairs or something like that. The discrete object that they're witnessing is most assuredly, in the objective sense, not actually an apple. The fact that they're claiming that it stems from an apple is no different from the claim that the apple that they're thinking about is made from two apple halves that are themselves discrete parts, or three apple thirds, or a bunch of cells that they're not even physically seeing because they don't have microscopes attached to their eyes. The fact is, when we think about a discrete object, this microphone's built up of billions and billions of atoms whizzing around. Some of them at any given time are, are decaying and exploding. Sometimes it's attracting new materials into itself. I'm exchanging atoms with this microphone when I'm talking into it. And yet I would just call it a microphone. Now for ease of use, of course, that makes sense. In a functional standpoint, if your only concern is survival, which I would say in a, in a humanistic sense is key, uh, if your only idea is, well, you've got to reproduce and, and find food and not die, you know, you shouldn't go around eating poisonous substances or whatever, then yeah, the way we describe the world makes perfect sense from that pragmatic standpoint. Beyond that, it's not objective. It's, it's, all, it's, a, it's a subjective framework in which objectivity only appears to exist because it's agreed upon within the framework. For instance, I look up at the sky and I say, well, the sky is blue. Most people say, yeah, oh, okay, so, so what? It's objectively true, but it's only objectively true within human understanding, unless it's like nighttime or it's really cloudy or something. We're talking about just the regular sky. It's blue. It's a nice, clear day. It's To our eyes, it's blue. They're going to agree that it's blue. It's only blue because humans are agreeing upon the fact that it's blue. I could use any other term under the sun for it. I could have no term at all. 
or I could s start rambling about the reflection of light within uh, the wavelength we just happen to be able to see. I'm not talking about any other emittance that's coming from the sky or any objects within the sky. I'm not taking into consideration the little wisp of cloud off on the horizon. I'm not taking into consideration the fact that the sky uh, changes in its visible spectrum from day to night and from dawn to dusk and whether it's cloudy or raining or whatever it happens to be doing. Reality can be easily manipulated by those who first see this is the fundamental central principle of all propaganda. And you need to be aware of this to defend yourself against malevolent propaganda and also hopefully to create benevolent propaganda to try to liberate people's minds. The central core principle is that a person cannot truly make propaganda effectively. I mean, they can shitpost, they can browbeat other people, but effective propaganda starts when you first realize that reality is simply an agreed-upon consensus. You simply have to shift the consensus in order to completely overhaul people's reality. It's all you have to do. You simply have to make the current consensus fall out of favor. It's all you have to do. And the next generation, raised up believing whatever propaganda you happen to have injected into mainstream consciousness, in turn, uh, some people will arrive. Maybe they'll overthrow it later. And it keeps shifting over and over and over again. Most of what humans have ever considered true is now believed to be false. Most of what we consider true in our era will be believed to be false a couple centuries from now. When we say something is good or something is bad, it's just a subjective judgment. It changes all the time. In the last 20 or 30 years, you've seen all sorts of judgments change. Being gay was considered, oh, well, that's wrong, it's evil, it's against God. Now it's, oh, yeah, it's okay to be gay. All sorts of things change all the time. The Catholic Church is probably the best purveyor of this relativistic concept over time that the world's ever seen, huh? when you think about what they do. Of course, uh, the Pope comes out, oh, yeah, you shouldn't kill, you shouldn't hurt people. A few centuries ago, you were calling for pogroms. You were calling to purge the heretics, destroy the Protestants, destroy the witches, destroy the Muslims, destroy the Jews, destroy the pagans, destroy whoever else, and you considered it at the time to be objective. You based it upon your understanding of your dogma. Now you claim equal objectivity on not hurting people, not having pogroms against Muslims and Jews and pagans and all of these different groups. And its stupidity is what it really is. It just shows that even when objectivity is claimed by an authority even as powerful as someone who claims to be speaking for God himself, it's completely subjective. It changes all the time. Uh, there's no objectivity behind it. It's only considered objective by its adherents who have been deluded into a worldview that's just a little bit different from the average uh, more secular individual or maybe a Protestant or something like that. All these different groups, they fight over what objective truth is. The reason they're ineffective at doing so is they don't even realize it's subjectivity. That's why the same people that tend to be masters of the world as far as policy, as far as having a lot of money, these people all realize that reality is completely subjective. They all realize it. They pretend to think that it's objective, especially with regards to religion. Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a believing... Obama, he comes out and says, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, blah, blah. No, he, rea he realizes that reality is utterly subjective. Trump realizes it. Clinton realizes it. George Soros, the Koch brothers, all these people. All the boogeymen that you've ever heard of, the, the Illuminati bloodlines and reptilians or whatever. All these people are is, is folks that have manipulated reality to their generally material benefit because they realize that it's subjective. They're, only, they're not even doing it to screw you. They're just doing it to enrich themselves. They just don't care if they step on you while doing it, generally speaking. And this is the case. Thankfully, one thing preventing them from actually taking over the world is they'll backstab each other, too. Because, of course, they're trying to outmaneuver each other to destroy one another. Because that's where the biggest money is. So naturally, you want to destroy the big money and take that money. You want to take that power. You don't want... Uh, them to continue competing with you. They stab each other in the back all the time. We see all sorts of spy versus spy uh, style intrigue on a regular basis. That's one thing I'd say about that. But yeah, if you want to understand reality as it really is, you have to forget about objectivity entirely. You have to realize everything's subjective. I know that this uh, relativism, uh, some people say, oh, that sounds like social Marxism. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we should... Uh, shift people in any given direction. I'm not saying, oh, well, we need more diversity. We need more 
whatever tolerance or whatever now you can go back the other way you can say oh well now we're going to applaud people who kill call them berserkers and say that they're strong men they're, they should be able to challenge you to a duel and take your property if you refuse and go back 500 years if you want to it's just as acceptable what i'm saying is that the the way in which the, like for instance the social justice warriors think about reality they don't realize that they constantly rant about moral absolutism and say it's terrible and yet the paradigm they're attempting to build is itself morally absolutist they seek to punish those that don't agree with them they're moral absolutists the social justice warriors like the bernie bros or the people who wear glasses that don't have any lenses in them and have like pink hair and stuff they're moral absolutists they're moralists <laughs> they, they, they claim objectivity of their views it's exactly the same all that matters uh, from perhaps my perspective would be well the system that's in place at any given time is conducive to having liberty number one some degree of social order number two and preferably avoiding you know armageddon number three uh, because we happen to live in a world with weapons capable of ushering such a thing in it's no longer just nature but yeah that's still a subjective judgment call that's just my personal preference based on my personal beliefs I can't even claim objectivity because it doesn't exist objectivity is not real subjectivity is all that exists uh, witness reality as it really is sometime you've got to stop thinking in terms of absolutes uh, only Sith, only a Sith Lord would think in terms of absolutes or something like that. Yeah, reality is completely malleable. Next video, I'll show you how you can make it malleable uh, in a literary form. If you're interested in doing that, it's, it's fundamentally very, very easy. Not many concepts have to actually sink in in order for you to literally start manipulating the, the very fabric of reality. I mean on a literal level. I don't mean on a, on a figurative level. I mean literally. Uh, you can begin to affect the way others perceive the world around them to a substantial degree. It is possible to do. You can use this for good or ill. And that's about all. Peace out.